are for last video named facial expression detection and in the last video means in that video i used deep learning for predicting whether i am happy sad angry or and so on means detecting facial expressions using deep learning and in this video the approach is slightly different and we will be using keras model for predicting the emotions from my face or from any person's face okay so if you didn't saw the last video i want you to see that because that was a very good video and as you can see that i had a very good repository for that and it got good response from you guys okay so in the previous video i used tensor flow for classifying whether i am happy sad etc based on images but in this video i'll be using keras and with convolutional neural networks to predict from a set of uh, an entirely different data set which is provided by kaggle and i will be showing you in a bit and we will train our classifier based on that data set and it will be means it will be able to predict whether i am happy sad angry neutral or so on means it will mainly be able to classify seven different uh, emotions from any person's face okay so i have created a jupyter file means notebook here on google colab because google colab offers gpu for entirely free and that's quite fast that's why i opted this one so uh, first of all let me show you what data set i'm going to use okay so in around 2013 kaggle provided us a data set means 6 years ago around 2013 okay so they provided a data set for classifying facial expression and named as facial expression recognition challenge okay so we will be using that data set because that data set is very good and uh, it has a lot of training images in a dot csv file means comma separated values and as you can see that it is a zip file in dot tar format and inside that we have the named as fer2013.csv for that file okay so i am going to use that but for being able to use that i manually downloaded this one from here and then uploaded to my google because i didn't know how to import uh, that dataset on google colab from kaggle as you can see that i am now going to use uh, .tar to extract the files from my google drive but for being able to use google drive in google colab you first need to access your google account means your google drive okay so we will run this line of code here as you can see we will be importing from google.colab import drive then we will mount that drive for this purpose you need to click on this link as you can see open link in new tab or directly click that and there it will appear a uh, link uh, for verifying it's you okay so i need you to continue to that part means you should cl click to that part and then click allow so here you will get an access code and you you should copy this and paste the code authorization code here and click enter and press enter sorry okay so now it will authorize and mount the drive of your google drive on google colab so as you can see that it has given us access to our google drive on google colab that's nice so moving on this part we will first extract our data and as you can see that i have set the data set here in my drive slash fer2013.tar.gz okay so now it has mounted that and now i will be using keras which will use tensorflow as a backend so you need to run these lines of code what is this line of code means first of all i am going to retrain our model based on a 2d convolutional neural network using keras okay so i have imported first tensorflow sorry so i have first imported tensorflow then keras then from keras dot models i have imported sequence here okay so i will be telling about these are in later this video whether they are used okay so all of these are import function okay then finally i have imported numpy as np and from mat matplotlib dot pyplot we will be importing it as plt okay so after that i am configuring this to use a gpu and if you don't know how to use a gpu on google colab you need to go to run time and then select change run time sorry and from here you can select either gpu or none or tpu okay so that's fine because gpu will allow our program to run faster quite faster okay so we will save this and 
if you do this first time it will reconnect and uh, your uh, reconnection will be done in a few minutes in a few seconds not minutes okay so as you can see that number of classes for uh, means uh, detecting what expressions we are going to detect are uh, seven that is angry disgust fear happy sad surprise and neutral and batch size is 256 and the number of epochs means the number of uh, is, steps the our program will run in each processor it will be 25 i have set this to 25 because 25 gives much accuracy it is uh, it takes quite time in uh, google colab but it it provides uh, accuracy okay so it took me around 10 minutes per epoch in Google Colab. That means around 250 minutes or 4 hours of continuous training. Okay. So then I, I have opened the data set that is FER2013.csv as F and I have read all the contents from it. And then I have printed the number of instances it has means the required number of images it has. The images are stored in a form of uh, numbers in the form of bytes or bits, you can say that. And Keras or deep learning libraries know how to access that uh, means those numbers to get a perfect output of uh, your image. Okay. So then these all are empty list of uh, means training and testing values means this loop will contain all the files required to train and test. Okay. So finally we have created an array from using numpy and the name is, the name of the array is xtrain and it will uh, it will have the data set of uh, training data okay and y train of uh, means this those are the dimensions are uh, the access of uh, our data okay so similarly x test and y test and so on okay so finally we have reshaped them as you can see here okay so now we have printed the train samples and test samples as you will see later in this video okay here the main part comes into the play as you can see we have constructed a cnn model here and name of the model is simply model and it is uh, using sequential a uh, function from keras model means Kera means keras library sorry for that and then we have added uh, uh, means th three layers to that uh, convolutional model so first we have imported the convolutional 2d model and activation function is relu everywhere and the shape of this activation function would be 48 48 and 1 and it means our image every image it will train be of this of the dimension 48 into 48 and similarly we have added the second and third convolutional layer okay so as you can see everything here works on the activation function of relu i'm doing this on relu because it's a quite good means a very good activation function okay so then we have generated the image data using these lines and saved it, it into a variable named gen and then training generator as uh, this line okay so finally we have compiled all the data in the model and uh, as you can see the matrices are accuracy and the categorical cross entropy okay so then finally we have fit all the data all the training data and testing as well as testing data into the model okay so and here if if fit doesn't equals to true it will load all means it will load everything that you previously saved so if you are running this for first time you need to set fit equals true and if you are on subsequent run you need to fit equals false so that it will load your means your trend data again and again so you don't need to waste your time again and again okay so here is a function for emotion analysis and it will uh, tell whether i am happy angry means as you can say angry disgust fear happy sad surprise or neutral and it will use uh, pi plot for showing the image of uh, <clears throat> the testing image as well as the graph whether i am happy and sad so after retraining the model as you can see i got a, an accuracy of around 92.57 percent that's quite nice if you only train your model for five steps or five epochs then it will give you only 50 percent or 50, 50 to 55 percent accuracy but in further steps you will get around 90 percent accuracy that's quite good then finally i have saved the model as model 25.h5 
25 for the number of epochs okay so here you can see that train loss is train loss is very low and train accuracy here 97 percent here the accuracy is 90, the overall accuracy is 92.5 percent but uh, the only the train accuracy 97 percent and test accuracy is 57.5 percent because this is very good because the, the winner of that kaggle challenge had only 34.4 means around 34 per percent accuracy so our model is given giving us 57.5 percent that's very nice okay so we have finally printed the confusion matrix so finally we have monitored the test results for example uh, if our test results are good or not as you can see we got only 57 percent accuracy so finally i have imported again means i have loaded that model that entire model that is saved means the save means i saved the model here as model 25.h5 and uh, explicitly imported it again for showing you how you can uh, use or reuse that again okay so here you can see i have created a function as it was on the above side means it will plot a graph about accuracy means uh, as i will show you what graph it is plotting and then explain every bit okay so now we will means test a file so as you can see guys i have manually uploaded this one dot jpg file on google colab okay and i i may show you and if I open that in here, okay. So this is the image. I downloaded it from Google and then uploaded it to Google Colab. Okay. So if I run this program, uh, if I test that image using our trend data set, let's see what we get. Okay. So as you can see, our model is doing very worst. Because uh, this girl is very happy and it is printing is as sad. So initially when I trained this model and tested this, I was very frustrated because uh, after so much time I thought everything I did was lost. But I again thought what was wrong there. So I used a face crop.py file which will crop only faces from every image, means faces of person from image then we will detect the facial expression from only the face because uh, as you can see that uh, here is the image there are a lot of background and uh, our model may stuck in the background instead of focusing here okay so that's why i use face crop.py file okay so if you don't know how to use this i have demonstrated this in my earlier videos in uh, face id program you can see that i will put a link to that in the description box below okay so what does uh, means face crop file does it uh, uses harkasket to detect the faces in an image and then it will crop and save it as uh, image okay so every time i will be using this the name of the file which means the output image means only the uh, image of only our face will be saved as capture dot jpg and uh, first time i will be using one dot jpg okay so i'm gonna run this so here you can see that I got kept capture.jpg and if I open this in new tab, you can see that, let it open. So you can see that we have got only the image of only face and now we can run again this program. Means we can again run the test only on the facial image. Okay, so I am going to rename it to capture.jpg. Okay. So as you can see that it's now predicting very well because the accuracy of happy means the prediction of accuracy is about 70% and that's very nice because in the, as you can see that in earlier time if there was all this it means the bloody kind of thing then the model was stuck there and you can test again with a lot of things for example let's say I'm opening two second image. 2.jpg i have downloaded this one too from google and then uploaded it to google colab okay let it open so here is the image and as you can see it is very sad and let's see what happens when i run this so its name is 2.jpg 
ओके सो एज यू कैन सी दैट इमोशन प्रोडिक्शन इज सैड अराउंड हंड्रेड परसेंट एक्सी मीन इट इज अराउंड नाइनटी एट टू नाइनटी नाइन परसेंट दैट इट इज वेरी सैड एंड दैट इज वेरी गुड सो एज दैट इट एंड वन मोर थिंग आई वॉन्ट टू सो यू दैट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू टेस्ट इट इन रियल टाइम so that's why i am using this code so what is the use of these lines of code so it will open an instance on google colab and then it will capture a uh, an image from our uh, means from the web camera of our pc or laptop whatever you, you uh, whatever you are using okay so it will be taking a photo and uh, and i am agreeing that i have not created this program as you can see i have and got this file from this link and you can go ahead and see that link okay so what is the use of this program so it will open an instance and then it will capture an image okay so i'm going to run this and finally it will save the means file as photo.jpg as you can see now i'm going to go i'm going to run this function okay so as you can see if you are running this for first time it will ask for your webcam permission and for subsequent run you you won't be getting means any of that okay so here is the as you can see a button for capturing this uh, means for capturing the image okay so i'm now gonna capture okay so it has been captured and when i refresh the files it will be saved as photo.jpg and if i open this in new tab okay so that's not a good good uh, expression i'm going to take this again okay okay so let's see and by running this program let's see what happens whether our model produces it right or wrong i'm going to open it in new tab and in this fragment of code i'm going to rename it to photo.jpg run it again run this fragment of code okay so again it says fear so there might be not a very good accuracy on real time images because one thing to note that here my webcam quality is not too good so if you will test this image with an dslr camera taken from a dslr then you will get a quite good accuracy okay so so guys that's it for this video and i hope you guys like this video so guys i will be putting link to all those videos i mentioned in the video and uh, hope you see the description below okay guys so thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe bye bye and have a nice day please share this video to as many people as you can bye bye dears